All right. Good morning, Mike. Let's talk jib trim. You know, a lot of times uh, with new crew, you know, they, they sort of, oh, you, the jib is the easiest. Let's just put a new body there and they'll figure it out as they go. So let's um, a little insight on, on how to bring these new jib trimmers uh, onto the boat, get them up to speed quickly um, and sort of cover the grounds for the, for, uh, for a first timer, if that, that makes sense. Um, it, it totally makes sense, Dave. And I think, um, you know, I do think it's a little underrated. I think sometimes you got a new trimmer and you sort of say, here's just some a rough reference, new trimmer. So let's just forget about it for now, set it to that reference and go. But I think the problem is um, that it, the jib sets it up for everything else. And if the jib's a little wrong, you're, you're never going to maximize other things. Just for example, I was just coaching last week and both in heavy and light air, the jib was off just a little bit and it, it spiraled everything else out of control. The jib was a little too loose. They were going a little too low. They had to ease their main a little more because there wasn't as good flow in the back of the main and vice versa. Sometimes they were over trimmed and, and it stalled and they just lacked that power. The jibs, maybe 30% of the power of the boat. And so they were giving that up and they were blaming everything else because they, they couldn't quite get the main right and everything. Mm. Yeah. And that's, I mean, a lot of boats will come preset. You've already got your marks. Um, so let's, let's talk a little bit about marks, how to use them. And then, you know, let's go beyond them and stuff like that. So uh, just imagine I've showed up to your boat. Uh, you've got marks everywhere, marks in the sheets. Uh, how, how, do you, how do you get the right marks in the sheets? Yeah, so you, you have to have some kind of good reference and we, we'll get maybe into that in a little bit. But once you decide your map reference, suppose you have a, a track um, and, and, a, and with, a, with a jib pulley on it, you know, jib leads can move. And right next to that track, you can put a number strip of inches and you can put a mark on the sheet so you can be at four inches or trimmed in a little more as two. And so you can have a number you can repeat. And I think that's the key here. So uh, I think you had to start off with understanding what you're trying to accomplish. And if it's a new trimmer, particularly, you're going to want to narrow it down to a number eventually, but you got to get there somehow. That's what you're asking, right, Dave? Yeah. How do we, how do we get to those numbers? Right. So I think um, underpowered and overpowered are the two main categories that are set very differently in my mind. I think in underpowered mode, you're trying to trim it as tight as you can without stalling the upper leech telltale. So my boat here, uh, I'm gonna erase the, the hull just so we can draw a little flow here, but you see the sails, the main of the jib, and you know the, the optimum trim is as tight as you can. It, it has a leech telltale right here that you can usually see uh, up by the middle spreader or, or, you know, through the, there's usually a window in the main that you can see up there because the sailmaker knows that's what you're trying to look for. And if you over trim, the thing just stalls instantly and literally goes backwards like that. If you're under trimmed, it'll flow, but it'll flow too well. And you're giving something up. So really briefly, what you're trying to do here is if you're under trimmed, what's really happening the reason this thing stalls is that flow is broken on the back of the jib. So it's not flowing here. Flow here looks great. Flow here looks great, but you're losing a third of your power because that's a forward force on the jib. It's actually kind of good for the main though, um, but that doesn't make up for the fact that you stall the back of the jib. If on the other hand, you under trim, you're going to have this telltale flowing great, but what's going to happen is you've given something up on the main. So the flow over the back of the main will separate sooner. It'll go like this and then start to kind of flip, you know, kind of go like that. So in order to get this thing trimmed right, you're going to have to ease it a little more. So what you're really trying to do is trim it in as tight as you can, move this separation back a bit. It'll still separate at the very, very end but not overdo it. So short answer to your question is I'll go out there with my new trimmer. I'll kind of look to lure or look through the window and I'll have them trim it in. Click, 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 click. It just stalled. Okay. Ease it a little bit. What number you got? I got number two. Okay. That's your max trim. All right. And we're in acceleration mode. We want to go to four. When we're up to speed. We want to go to two. So simple. Yep. It kind of is, but it's, um, you know, often overlooked. So once you, once you have these settings, right, then, um, you know, how, how do you use them as conditions change though? I mean, as you mentioned, you know, you got to sort of be just 
hyper alert to things happening and your eyeballs on the, the leech the whole time. And, uh, but you know, as things change and how dynamic do you need to be for a new guy? So, you know, I think that, you know, if it's a new guy and they're not quite up on this and they got other things, they're even worried about where their feet are going and everything else like that. I, I might set it up a tiny bit forgiving, uh, have it out just a little bit more. And, and that's true too. If the sea state's weird or it's really shifty, uh, if you have it in right to the hairy edge, if you set it to that two number all the time, it's going to stall and, and you're going to lose something if it's not a little forgiving. The better they are, the more I want them to play it. Get a little lull, it's going to hook in a little bit, it's going to stall, so you got to ease it. Get a big pop, it's going to open up, and then before you can trim it in again. And uh, so that's what, you know, the ultimate goal is to understand that you're looking at this Um and then, but the simple way is to get your reference, get really close, maybe make it a little forgiving. And then, um, and I think you're going to be 90% there. The last, you know, the last 10% is the fine tune I was just talking about. Okay. I'm going to throw a curveball at you. Now it's, it's easy to go sheet in and out, but there, I mean, this may be for a later topic, I suppose, but uh, so many variables backstay, you know, four state tension, how your tension um, should we go there or is that too much for a new trimmer and just try to keep it basic? Yeah. Well, I think the good news is this jib trim technique, uh, transcends all of that. So suppose you're really good at your boat, you sail it all the time and you have a backstay or some other way to control the mass spend and the four state tension and you know what to do. I mean, you can still do that and then double check, Hey, I, you know, I just flattened the main, maybe we can trim in the jib a little more, try it click, click, click. Uh, yeah, it's still flowing. All right. Our new number is one instead of two. Uh, so I think you'd become the expert then. And then your, your, your trimmer still, you understand the concept, but you still, you know, I still like some sort of reference to be able to come back to for each new condition. So you've got to change that number as conditions change, as you change your settings. Uh, I think leaving it static at two all day, just because you set that before the first race is a mistake. Okay. So you've got, uh, that's just one reference is your, your telltale. What are, what are some other references that we can rely on? Um, you know, maybe you can't see through the window or, or is there anything else yeah. we can use? Yeah. So I, I think the, you know, the ultimate reference is the flow on the set. So if I have time and I can see it, I still double check with that all the time. The next level of reference is something more, I think more solid than just the number. So if you have, say you have your, your, your jib track here, right? And you got your number reference here. And you, you got, you know, zero, one, two, three, four. And you got your pulley that's going there. And so when you sheet in, you might have a mark on your sheet, right? And the problem I have with this is it, it changes from boat to boat. Like, uh, I can't say a, just because I was two today, I can't just say, a, a, you know, three weeks from now, I'm in a different boat with somebody else. It's not going to be two anymore. So I really like another more solid reference. For example, on our J24, you know, it's pretty universally known that you're going to go maybe four to six inches off the spreader tip with a Genoa <clears throat> that overlaps the spreader uh, when you're kind of in acceleration mode, especially in flat water. And then as it gets, as you get up to speed, you're going to go two to four inches off. So you're looking up at the spreader. In fact, we put little reference marks on the spreader at two inch increments. So it's easier to judge two inch increments off of it. On my thistle, I have a little zip tie. It's 10 and a half inches off the face of the mast, the side of the mast on that middle spreader. So I know exactly where two or 10 and a half inches is. And that becomes my reference for the race. I say, okay, uh, one inch off of that is my stall point. And I think that's a more solid reference, but it also transcends, transcends all the different days and different boats. If I switch J24s or whatever, that still works, whereas the number does not. The number is only good in the moment. Mm, I can see that. So that, that that's a sort of coming out of Mark Ryan, it's just to know where you're at. But ultimately, when you settle in, you can look at the leech, want to make sure it's it's true to your marks. Correct. Oh, true to the marks. You can set it up before the race. A new condition comes, you say, hey, we should pay attention to the jib bleach for a minute. Okay. Yeah, I like it. Or no, we got to, we really got to go one number more or less or something because the condition change. Mm. And it's so, pretty dang sensitive. You know, you know, an eighth of an inch on the jib trim will change that. Just a click or two will change that leech telltale from flowing to completely solid. Mm. 
Okay. So what, um, how do you, how do you get this new trimmer beyond just, uh, just looking at the, the zip tie and the numbers and sort of understanding, uh, things as they're changing? Well, I think that, you know, if it's, uh, it's, if it's a new trimmer, you're just trying to talk them through the day. You, you gotta, in the end, or, or even if it's an experienced one, um, really in the end, there's, there is a feel component to this, right? Like you've got to know when your boat's going fast and if it feels a little bound up, you know, maybe I need something a little more forgiving. Uh, yeah, we really were talking about this leech telltale for the, for underpowered conditions and overpowered, I'm really going by feel because it's always going to flow because you're already twisted a little bit to match the main. So I'm trying to hunt and pack on how much a little bubble in the back window of the main so I'm, I want to get them looking at the things to take them beyond the numbers. I think the numbers are a great start. And, and then even if they're super experienced, they're going to use those as a starting point. But the better they are, they're going to look at these other indicators, the leech telltale and the underpowered conditions and the little slight bubble in the main and the overpowered. Um, but in the end, I, you know, I end up talking to them a lot, even with an experienced jib trimmer. I'm like, let's try it in a little more. What do you guys think? We're we going all right. Feels good. Yeah, we got a nice height. Yeah, that was good. All right, I like it. Or, wow, we're really bound up. Let's try a little eased out. Is that better? Yeah, wow, that feels so much easier to steer. So I think you can't give up on that part too. And the better they are, the better, the more they can help you with that too. They can say, yeah, we just feel high and slow. We got to do something different. Here. Let's crack it a little and see what happens. Yeah, I wanted to go there a little bit. And, so, and you, you touched on a, a good point. I think you're you're big into the dialogue and the speed loop and, and things like yeah. that. So I think uh, I I mean, that's probably the ultimate reference really is even more so than looking at zip ties and tracks and things like that is, is, is what it feels for you on the helm. Yeah. I think one of the keys is deciding quickly. There's, there's two references I use the, um, for speed. And, you know, one is your, your internal speedo. This is your, your feel, you know, does, are we moving fast through the water? Are we ripping along or are we, you know, or we just stalled, you know, there's that field part. And then there's the external, which is, uh, you know, some boats with GPS numbers or a speedo, a real speedo on board. You're like, wow, we were going five, eight before, and now we're going five, two, like something's wrong. You know, uh, last leg we were five to eight and now we're, now we're like five one. So, what, did we something change? Yeah. It's a lot lighter. All right. Let's use it out. So there's, and then also relative to other boats. You know, I love the human speedo, we call it. They, they're they referencing another boat. Yeah, you're uh, your same height, but you're a little bit slower. All right. Let's try to change something. Oh, that's better, you know. So those references are the ultimate. But what you're trying to do is once you, once my, my trimmer or whoever says, hey, yeah, we got great height. We're, we're a little higher, same speed. This is a great setting. Then I kind of look at the settings. Okay, guys, memorize these settings because let's repeat them for the rest of the race and, and beyond. Mm. Yeah, I guess it's some points of, of how important it is to, to not be afraid to talk and sort of like, you, you know, you may be a little apprehensive going into an important job like that. And just, you know, some people would say, well, you think you want to have the perception that you know everything, hmm. you're doing it right, but um, it's better to talk through it at least for the first couple races or whatever. So you get, get a feel for the boat. Well, I think it's, um, yeah, I think you talk less and less as you sort of figure out things, but I think you're always talking. So even at the, when we're winning a big regatta, you know, we're still fine tuning. I think it just gets more and more fine tuned, right? It just becomes a little subtlety things. We're still always talking about, I, I'm not, like, I think I can get a little more height here. I'm trimming in the main, bringing the gym in to match. Okay. man, how, how are we doing guys? Yeah, that's working. And it becomes very subtle. Um, but I think the, the more beginner they are, the more kind of course that is, but that never stops. That loop never, ever stops, no matter how good you are. All right. So um, one thing that, that happens too, though, is, is the, the trimmers, you can be just be thrown into, into that, to that spot, you know, the more, maybe you have a practice day if you're lucky, or it might be that morning of the race, but is there anything you can do or that you do with some new trimmers you bring out about getting them up to speed before the first day? You know, do you, do you have, is it good to have pictures of the leech profile, give them something to start with, uh, before they show up to the boat. Well, I love this, this talk, that picture I showed you with the flow. And, you know, we actually did a sailing world article for that. You and I did a while back where uh, we put it through a wind tunnel and showed that. So I have that article and I actually will send that to the trimmer before, or if it's just the morning, there's some, the, the, really what's valuable about that is looking at the pictures, what it looks like when it's over trimmed or under trimmed. 
And it's, it's often an aha moment when they look at that, like, oh, um, that's what I'm trying to accomplish. But, you know, I think beyond that, I think it's, hey, we're going to go out there. We're going to agree on the references, whatever that is, whether it's, you know, how it lays against the rail, how, it, how far off that spreader it is, or the number. We're going to go figure out the no- number for the condition, and we're going to figure out a range. So if the number is four, uh, is kind of a really safe number. I think, you know, three is kind of max trim and acceleration is five to six. So out of every tack, I want you five to six. I want you to slowly bring it in as I bring in the main to like four. And then if we feel really good, I'm like, you trim all the way, it's the three. So coming up with that, those numbers or whatever the reference is, um, that is going to be our goal for today so that we can eat quickly get 95% to speed. Okay, then how about after racing? Give me a quick sort of, how, do, how would you debrief with the new trimmer, um, you know, in the first regatta? You know, I would say that, um, you know, I think each trimmer is so different and their skills are so different. But, you know, I think the, the best trimmers are really good at making their best first guess. So I want them after, after a race or a regatta, and especially if I'm going to sail, especially if I'm going to sail the next day or something, I, you know, and we're going to build on this relationship. I'm saying, okay, I just want you to get empowered and emboldened to go make your first best guess. And then we'll talk about it from there. So I want you to really think about the references we use today and which ones you like the best and which one you think are repeatable. And we're going to really focus on them tomorrow. And I want you to take it the next step where you just, you just try your best to get it right. And if you're a little over trimmed or a little under trimmed, you know, don't be afraid to ask me and let's talk about it, but we're going to have a dialogue to kind of finish that up. But I want you to make your first best guess so I can think about my job. And then I don't care if you're a little wrong, we'll fix it. Awesome. All right. Let's sum it up then for, for new trimmers. What's, what's the, I guess the, the critical rules of thumb. Quick rule of thumb is, you know, even if they're absolutely brand new, I, I still like to always start with letting them know what we're trying to accomplish, even if it's on the water. Hey, we're going to go set the, you're, we're going to, this is the, there's a numbers track on this one. I really, that's the best reference for this boat. Before the start, we're going to go through the jib sheet range and figure out where that, this jib leech telltale stalls. And here's what we're trying to accomplish. I'd like them to know why, instead of just saying, doing it myself and saying, okay, pull it into three. Because I think it just, you know, I'm, I'm leading to them empowered to do it themselves, make their first best guess. And if they know why, then they kind of get the fact that if we pick three and now it's lighter, they really got to go to four. You know, they kind of get our acceleration used to be four. We better make it like five or six now. It just got light and choppy. So then when I say that or we talk about it, they kind of understand why right away. Excellent. Okay. Uh, I'm going to throw a curveball at you. I know you've sailed with some outstanding trimmers in over your many years. Is there one that really stands out? It was the ace. The ace trimmer. Mm. You know, I, I think I've had a couple really good, um, you know, my, my, I have two trimmers in my day 24, Quinn and Max, they kind of switch off. And, you know, I think they're, they're both so good, uh, for the same reason, which is they're totally willing to take a stand. This is my best guess, but then they're immediately willing to ask for help saying, Hey, I think I'm right. You know, what do you, what do you think? How does it feel? Like they, they bring me into their jib conversation to make sure they're right and to fine tune. So we can always work together to be perfect. And they're always moving the sheet. Like it, I think that the best trimmers are moving the sheet more than uh, people that are new at it. I think people tend to cleat it and lock it and it doesn't move as much as a main. Like I'm playing the main all the time to get this uh, a little bit more out of it, but for every little t- change in trend of the wind or the waves, little wave set comes slight crack. I use the main bear off go and they do it and they see it coming. Bow person calls bad set of waves. They just crack right away. And they make their first best guess and that allows me to then modify it. Hey, don't use it quite so soon or we can fine tune the details later, but they make their first best guess. 